we have been at the exhibition area. Yeah, we've been to the exhibition area. What the exhibition area is, is it's like a bit away from all the stages. Uh, it's kind of like these portable rooms, I'd say. Portable kind of halls, like pretty big rooms, right? And uh, each yeah. of them are feet. So we had one that was themed as if, as if it was some kind of forest. This, one, this was strange, right? in and it's a load of kind of uh, bits of fabric that are like it was like cut up sacks or something but really densely packed yeah. uh, like vertically the point is they all looked the same right and you're just wondering it completely there. it completely blocks your view of anything yeah and you're just wondering there and getting lost the idea of that was like was like it's like you're coming into another world you know yeah it was uh to s- simulate a forest yeah the idea behind it um uh, the yeah, I mean, I just want to keep talking about this one for a, for a minute. Okay. Uh, they basically had lights shining, and because oh, yeah. obviously it was reflecting against the sack, so all you could see is you could see these various different yeah. glowing colours in this thing, and then you know, like you just walk towards the light, and then you bump into another person, and they're yeah. just like, and you have this sort of really, uh, sort of really off off kilter encounter because it's not a normal social situation you literally have like walked face first into this person yeah it's like you can't you can't see further than a centimeter in front of you there's well, always, i mean you centimeters always, is a bit over okay, exaggerated then, out of your personal then, space then two inches in front of you right you can't you can't because because it's so densely populated with these pieces of sand yeah fabric um, so sort of you, white you just randomly fabric. literally walk right into someone if you were me <laughs> and, uh, and, and it'd just be this like weird like what are you doing here kind of yeah. thing it, it I, I think it really uh, it, it, it gave me a sense of sort of wonder and you can kind of see that on these people's faces because when you bump into them you're just both like ooh cool because you've just like bumped into another person in this sort of weird environment and I, it was really it's quite a nice soothing experience I found it yeah I, I agree um, we also went to what was the there, there, there was this uh, video gaming oh, yes. project. Um, basically, it's uh, it, the whole idea of it is to get people who don't normally play video games to sort of play play them yeah. and what like working together, teamwork stuff like that. So you walk into this room and okay, the first thing you see is the main kind of thing is two tables and obviously chairs around them, the benches, and there's buttons on these tables, right? Maybe like eight buttons on each table. Well, I'd say four buttons on each table because I counted. Um, I'm sure it was four. Well, there was between. There was. Be, there were, wait, wait. Anyway, there were lots of buttons on the tables. There were lots of buttons on the tables. Sam, so I you actually. You are right. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, whatever, man. <laughs> okay, so there's eight buttons on these tables, and um, and and uh, projected. Kind of different bit. different coloured buttons yeah. as well. It was like an eight bit or kind of game, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, just a. There's no explanation to any of this. There's just a screen playing this game with a bunch of boxes, very of the same colour as, as the buttons, and sort of arcadey music playing in the background. Yeah. And uh, what what you're meant to do? We the the instructions were in Danish, so, so we kind of had to learn as we went, right? Uh, you're meant to basically press your button, the button that you've sat by, at the right time. Yeah, and in time, it's all in time with the nice sort of arcade yeah. soundtrack. Uh, and, uh, and if one person messes up, this is like a team game. If one person messes up, then everyone starts the little yeah. sort of bit again. You, yeah, they're different sort of levels of like maybe it's like a two two bars, three bars of music, yeah. and. Uh, and as soon as you mess, as soon, as soon as one person messes up, pushes their button in the wrong order, you have to start from the beginning. Yeah. And uh, when we played it, I don't think our team did very well yeah. because me and you had no idea what we were doing. So we're just slapping these buttons like whenever we feel like it, really. And uh, <laughs> we're just pushing them whenever we want. And I think a lot of other people were doing that as well. Yeah. And then eventually, what happened was you learn. You, 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 learn, you learn finally. You start to learn what's going on, and you've got these people shouting instructions yeah, as, in Danish next people, to you for different colours. Like people gradually learn, <laughs> we also learned to work together, which was yeah. a beautiful thing. <laughs> Maybe it was like it was basically there was one really loud Viking, and he was just yelling every like who to what 
like, what, uh, what colour to press. Yeah, yeah, what colour to press. <laughs> I mean, it's still, even with that, it took us a while <laughs> to, yeah. to like, then, finish the game. And then everyone got so much into it. It was yeah. like... And, and Cheering we, every we single time. It, we, and then we if someone would mess up, we'd be like, no! It was really... It was, it was really, a... It was, a, a, it was Yeah, it was a very enthralling experience. And it was nice to play with all these people. Yeah. I mean, even, even though the language barrier was there, we all still managed to work together as a team, yeah. which was lovely. And, uh, like, as soon as we completed the game, everyone was high-fiving each other. And, yeah. Yeah, and left to, to the final one we went to. Which this was a place, performance art area. Yeah, it was, like, a very kind of drama-situated. It was a very surreal place. Like, um, you'd... Well, we didn't actually get to go in, did we? Because no. Because there was, like, I think... It's a huge queue. queue. Yeah. Uh, I will just because obviously we haven't been in hopefully we'll, we, we will get in there before the end of the festival um, but uh, basically the whole idea behind it is it's, uh, it's to promote sensuality which is as it is a kind of an ambiguous word anyway um, but in various ways it's a performance art piece so there's obviously a, a bunch of actors there some of them in various different costumes one lady in a uh, sort of glitter morph suit built up of little sequins almost like a disco ball style thing and another lady sort of, uh, I think, simulating sexuality as, like, interpretive dance-wise. And um, it was just very uh, interesting seeing these interpretations of, of, uh, of these ideas. And another part of it was there were other sort of people who weren't actually performing at the time, but sort of in, in wardrobe and then helping sort of do tickets, but instead of tickets, they were wrapping ribbons around you and things like that. And it was all there to promote this sort of odd feeling and sort of put you, put you a little bit out of sorts. Yeah, it was. Uh, to get you into the right atmosphere for going into the tent. It was certainly a strange experience to like walk around a corner from everyone just, you know, acting as everyone acts to some people acting like way out of the ordinary, just kind of like uh, really, tricking everyone like you don't expect it when you walk around no. the corner for, so for the, like half a second you're like wait what <laughs> it, and it, it creates a huge element of confusion I think no one that was waiting in line really understood what they were about to see they just saw that it was going to be a really cool experience